Well, so you know, we've been following train troubles in Plymouth since our In Your Neighborhood show aired in February. That's right. We're talking about trains causing those long delays, sometimes over an hour. So tonight, we are hearing from business owners and also talking directly to elected officials. Priya Mann shows us why some are so fed up and why a solution could still be really a long time away. We're talking to business owners here in Plymouth about the effect of train delays and we're on Main Street right now. You can see the railroad crossing right there on the other side of the tracks. We spoke with a pet groomer and on this side of the tracks, we're talking to a gym owner, both businesses dealing with significantly different problems. Good. At Hale Strength and Shape, a women's only gym, hitting PRs happens as often as train delays. I'll pull up and there's a train and then before you know it, and class is starting late first thing in the morning and everything else starts to run behind because of that. Gym members never know how long they'll be stuck waiting at the tracks. It's very frustrating, especially when you're, you know you have to be someplace, a class starts at a certain time and you're, you have no control over it. But the other day when it was snowing, I hadn't brushed my car off, so I actually just got out and like, Brush the rest of snow off my car. So. While you were waiting for the train to cross? Oh, there was plenty. I could have done the whole row of cars. <laughs> it took so long. Jeff Stokes owns a business a block away, right next to the tracks on Main Street. But I've seen trains stalled 45 minutes and cars backed up all the way down to both lights. The trains shouldn't be able to block intersections for hours at a time. Local 4 spoke with Congresswoman Debbie Dingle, whose new district includes Plymouth. Local leaders can't do anything since trains are interstate transportation and regulated by the feds. I have pushed them very hard uh, to try to do something, but in the end, we got to pass legislation. Shirley Keller has lived in Plymouth for 24 years and owns Perfect Paws Pet Salon. <laughs> When her clients or groomers get stuck at the train, she has to accommodate all those extra pets. I never knew there was this many trains going through Plymouth until I moved down here, until I opened my business down here. Then it's like, wow. And you've been here a while. Yeah, 24 years. Has it gotten better, worse? I'd say worse. Over the years, Congresswoman Dingle says she's held countless meetings with the Michigan Department of Transportation, Federal Railroad Administration, state legislators, and local leaders. Everybody is pointing their fingers at everybody else and saying that they don't have the ability uh, to change or to regulate what has to be done. I would like it if we had some local control and if our complaints and our grievances could actually, if they could take action on it, because it's not like they're not listening to us. I mean, the city of Plymouth and even probably our local legislators, they know how inconvenienced we are, but they're powerless about it. They can't really even do anything. In Plymouth, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. By the way, Priya reached out to the train company several times with a story didn't hear back. Now, we know train delays are a problem in several cities, including Trenton and Woodhaven. So we are staying on top of this issue to see if there can be a solution.